Uh, this is Emmett from Cleveland. Emmett. Another Ohio call. Back to back, back, to back, to back Ohio calls. There we go. We, the other day we had three calls in a row from Portland, so it's kind of a theme. Oregon or Maine? Oregon. Oregon. Okay, there we go. Uh, no, I wanted to talk about the Clean Water Act and the Supreme Court ruling this morning on the Clean Water Act, if you guys are okay with that. Sure. Um, a lot of people don't really, like, understand what the Clean Water Act does. A lot of people think it's just for pollution in your drinking water and things like that. But, you know, for the last 30 years or so, the Clean Water Act has also regulated wetlands and mm. streams um, features that essentially, you know, a lot of people might not really even walk by and think would be something that would be federally regulated. Um, but all of these areas contribute to the, uh, to the environment and to the quality of our drinking water. Um, and the Supreme Court ruled this morning in favor of limiting the scope of the Clean Water Act yeah. to only regulate navigable waters and their adjacent wetlands. This must have broken um, really, really recently because that was not in my like, headlines. Yeah, it was. It literally happened at 11 o'clock this morning. And the scary thing is that, you know, there's exemptions for small homeowners in these laws. There's exemptions for small projects. You know, if you're just a guy, it's not like the worst thing in the world to try and navigate this program. It's really only when large developers want to come in drain a wetland and build a huge housing development that it, they run up into any issues. Um, and, you know, what this is going to do is the Clean Water Act becomes the, the nexus by which all of the other environmental policies are allowed. For example, the Endangered Species Act, it's not really a law that people have to follow. However, when they get a federal permit, they are the federal permitting agency has to abide by all other environmental rules. So then all of a sudden, endangered species policy comes into play yeah. just because you're getting a permit on your wetland. And so, I mean, what we're going to see is like a degradation of the water quality across the United States, a degrad uh, an increase in the deforestation, but also just a general, like, a general disregard for all of the other environmental policies that really are only able to be enacted because they're tacked on to these federal permits. Um, this happened in 2018 under Trump, where he tried to redefine the status of the Clean Water Act just by, you know, they had that Scott Pruitt guy in there. Yeah. And they, uh, redefine, they redefined wetlands to only include the features that the Supreme Court has ruled on this morning. Um, and the issue with that, I think the state of Arizona ended up suing the federal government because you know, a lot of states don't have their own program to deal with this. And it, it gets into a situation where gigantic rivers, you know, like the Colorado or something like that, could potentially be, have no protection whatsoever. Uh, yeah, um, and the Colorado, so we're already dealing with massive problems with the, like, lack of water in the Colorado River and how important that is for the neighboring um, states who like rely on that as a source, um, you know, I'm seeing now because this broke so soon that it was a five to four decision. Kavanaugh ended up um, siding with the three liberal justices in the dissent. But to your point, it's less about what like this ruling is specifically uh, addressing. It's the fact that the Supreme Court is now opening the door to place significant restrictions on the ability of the administrative state to make scientific and like academic determinations about what they're going to do with regulations. Like they're already infringing on the EPA's discretion in this area, which is what is super concerning, like not just exactly. for the EPA, but it's, for other agencies too. No, it, exactly. It's all about the agency rulemaking process. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Clean Water Act just says that it empowers the EPA to prevent the discharge of pollutants into the waters of the United States, right? I mean, and the interpretation of that is left up to the agencies and has been since the 70s, right? But, I mean, this is really a problem if Congress has to list all of the pollutants that aren't allowed in our water. Sounds like we're going to get a lot worse water around here. Yeah, and just an example of where the conservative movement is at. You say the 70s, Clean Water Act, under Nixon. <laughs> Signed by Nixon, you know? Yeah. So, it's just, yeah. it's... Well, and, 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 you know, 
these things weren't just done out of the goodness of their heart, right? I mean, the, the federal government has been responsible for dredging shipping canals since 1899 under what's called the Rivers and Harbors Act. And, you know, the original idea of the Clean Water Act was they were spending so much money on having to dredge shipping canals, they thought, well, how can we address the sediment upstream of that, right? Because if we get rid of the wetlands and we get rid of the streams, now all of this runoff is going directly into these large rivers, and we and the federal government ends up paying for that anyway because they have to pay to dredge all of the shipping canals. Yeah. And so they thought, well, if we protect the wetlands, we'll actually end up paying less. And so, I mean, this is... It, it's, but the it's modern so Republican totally Party doesn't care about the government paying less or more. It should be, it's about, like, offsetting costs that corporations might have to engage in or might have to pay and making sure that they have to pay less. But, it's, I mean, it's just so psychopathic because, totally. like, they live in this country. They drink this water. They're, you know, they don't they have neighbors and friends who are going to live in homes that are going to get washed downstream in unregulated flood areas? Like, it's just so bizarre. I, I totally agree. Um, it's just, yeah, we'll, we'll let you go now, uh, Emmett, but it is... Um, just like the 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 restriction on the ability or honestly on like the fungibility of uh agency authority to move with the times and understand new problems as they crop up that's the thing that's inc that's concerning you know they're trying to freeze authorities and not have it be like something that changes with the time as it should because science changes with the times absolutely yeah. I just want to say, you guys are great. Emma, it's been awesome listening to you. Uh, rest in peace to Michael, and you guys have a great day. I appreciate that. Thank you very much.